In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can pick two predominant colors from an image using Python. We are going to learn a ton about colors, how colors work, how to pick colors, how to remove colors, anything about colors. It's been a lot of fun and extremely, extremely helpful to learn about color theory. So let's get started. Okay, I have this project, I talked about it before in on Mastodon, where I am um, every day, pick a country and plot the democracy status for that country. And to do that, I am taking the flag colors, two of the colors, to be able to plot the 2013 values against the 2023 values. And I've been fine-tuning this code for quite a while. I think it's almost ready, but you never know. But this is what I've come up with. I'm going to show you the code. We will go step by step. I won't write it, but I'm going to explain everything so you can do it too. So the flags, first of all, comes from countryflagicons.com, and this is the URL. So the only thing that you need to do is to feed the country code to the to the URL. So we're here in uh, Jupyter Notes, and we're going to need quite a few libraries. So we're going to use early to read the flag. Uh, Peel, we're going, you will see. These are the, the modules and you will see where they are used as we go along. So we're going to run the code. The first thing is that, you know, we're going to get the flag or create the flag URL. And you just, you know, I have the code here so I could actually change easily when I'm testing. But this is AM is the flag for Armenia, maybe? Armenia, yeah. So I have the flag name on the URL, and now I'm going to open the image. And for that, I'm using the URL uh, package. And you can see the image here. Now I want to get this image and convert it to RGB. So I want Python to strike the colors that are there and give me the RGB colors. And that is used uh, with Peel. And this is the code to get it. So you just convert it to web and then get the RGB values and then get it in pair in like in in color. So you know RGB, RGB, RGB. I'm gonna show you here the first five. So this is how they look. 225, 225, 225 is white in RGB world. This is another shade of white and blah blah blah. Right? So now we have our colors in RGB. Perfect. I want to find the dominant colors. So what I am doing is asking uh, Peel to count how many times a color shows. So I'm going to show you here, color count, and this is uh, counting that you can see 255, 255, 255 exists in this picture 1,696 times, which means it's one of the predominant colors, otherwise it wouldn't appear so many times. And then this is color, this is color, and this that color. Perfect. Now I'm going to convert that into a data frame because we're going to start doing some work with it. I just want to have, again, two colors, but I'm picking a few just because if you have a lot of white or if you have a, you know, you need to have a few in order to then you know, remove. I'm going to actually pick the first, you see here, six colors. So I read it into a data frame, and then I separate them and as RGB, so you can see RGB, okay? Great. Now, here's the thing, for my chart, I cannot have white. The yellow, for example, cannot be white, or the blue cannot be white either, because otherwise there's no contrast and it won't be seen. And this was one of the problems that I was having with the previous code. So what I'm going to do is eliminate all the whites. And one of the things I learned is that white have a value of R bigger than 230, G bigger than 230, and B bigger than 230, which means that if I add this up, the white will have a value bigger than 690. So I am going to create a new column, which is going to be the total. Let me show you here. You see, I create a new column and then I remove this, this, this part here, create a new column. This filters out all the values that are over 690. 
And then I drop the total column and I said, give me the last remaining two colors. And now we have two colors. None of them are white in any shade of white. Perfect. So now that I have it, I'm going to convert it to hex because that's what I'm using then in Matplotlib to plot the colors. Uh, here is the a small function to do that. And now we're going to use Matplotlib to print the colors. And you can see here is the red and the mustard color, which is two of the colors of the Armenian flag. Beautiful. So this is what I had in the beginning. But there are always exceptions to any rules. So what happens with, for example, a country like Finland, where they have only two colors on the flag. So Finland flag is like this. You see? It's white and blue. So if we plot that, because we're getting rid of all the whites, Finland will get only one color, and I need two colors, not one. So what I'm going to do is, when I have just one color, I want to have add a complementary color to that. Let me go here to show you something. This is quite cool. So this is the color wheel and all that stuff. Complementary colors are colors that are on the opposite side of the wheel. So there are colors that complement the color that you already have, but they have contrast. You can see here, so this is a complement of this, that one is that one, so I want to have this color. Then you have monochromatic colors, which is the same color but different saturations and things like that. Analogue triadic, there are tons of different... We're going to use monochromatic also, but we go here, and the code to co create a complementary color is to uh, get 255 minus whatever R value you have, and 255 minus whatever value you have for 52, and so on and so forth. So this is a complementary color of the one that we already had. So cool. So now I'm going to count the number of colors that I have on my data frame, and if it is one, I'm going to add a new um, row uh, with the complementary color, which is exactly what happens in here. As you can see here, we have this one, and I am adding the complementary color in there. And now we just print the colors, and voila! Now I have again two colors. The blue one was from the flag, and the complementary color that we created. And I thought like, oh, I'm done with this. This is enough. Well, not quite. <laughs> not quite. Let me show you. I'm going to show you the Antarctic flag. So. The Antarctic flag is given with two shades of blue. Let me show you. It is up here. So you see the Antarctica, it has shades, like it's a shaded flag. So it has light blue and darker blue. And because we want to have the two predominant colors, both of them, the blue are predominant, so I'm getting blue. You know, if we get blue and blue together, you won't see anything because there's no contrast. Here is an example. This is for Bahrain, and you see I have red and a lighter red, but it doesn't work, you don't see anything, so this doesn't work. So we need to identify if a color is monochromatic. It means it's the same color, but it's a different shade of it, or a different light, lighter or, right? So how do we do that? It was so interesting. So this is what we're going to do. This is the same code as before, this is the AQ, and it's giving me the two shades of blue. What I'm going to do now is I converted the RGB colors to HSL. Let me show you. So HSL is, is, stands for Hue, Saturation and light, Lightness, where Hue is a color. So Hue means blue. And saturation is how you can see here the intensity of the color and this is the light of the color but it is the same color so if we convert the rgb to hue and the hue is the same number then we know it's the same color and this is exactly what we're going to do so here is the code this is using the library colorsys you need to have that one that one otherwise it won't work i couldn't find it, how to do it with Peel, which I would have preferred, but yeah. So this is converting HLS to 
you. Well, you have here, this is the entire code where you get the HSL. I just need the H. I don't care for anything else. So I just say return H and put it in the new column. This is H cell. And then you can see here there is 212, 212. So this is the same color. This is blue. It's just different shades of it. So what I'm going to do is if that's the case, keep the first one. Here you say, keep, if there are duplicates, keep the first one and then remove the column again. I don't want it. And once we have just one color again, we do the complementary thing and voila, now we have, instead of two shades of blue, we have blue and the complementary color, which in this case is the brown. And here is the final code. In case you need it, I'm going to post this into GitHub. I'm going to move everything to code base, but for now it's on GitHub. I haven't put it there yet, but we'll put it there. So extremely good exercise to understand how colors work. I don't know if this will be the final code because, you know, I prefer to not test all the countries and just let it run and see. It's quite interesting for me. And also it allows me to tackle one thing at a time. But yeah, I hope this was useful. And again, I will share the code on GitHub. I will put the link down below. And let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see on this channel. Take care.